All right, welcome back friends. Yep, that's right. Today we are painting a donut, the pinnacle of fried doughy deliciousness. If you're new to the channel, my name is Alpai. I'm a professional artist and what I like to do here is make art more interesting and accessible to people in a fun and laid back way. Doesn't matter if you're young, old, an artist or not. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing to the channel and giving the video a like. I would very much appreciate it. And with that being said, friends, let's dive right into it. Let's find out how scrumptious of a donut I can paint. So first things first. Before I can even think about making anything look realistic, I need to create a foundation that I can build on. And the way I do that is by first putting down mostly flat shapes of color. The donut itself is most fundamentally only made up of three different shapes of color. The pink glaze, the brown crust and the tan color of the dough. Add to that one more shape for the shadow of the donut, in this case a dark gray and we have ourselves a nice base to work with. Once I've got some paint down I can start to mold and manipulate it. And each of the shapes that I just put down gets divided into shadow and light areas. This way I can slowly start to build up some depth and volume, which is exactly what we need if we want to make this look real. A few flat shapes of color, some light and shadow here and there, and things are already starting to take shape. But how exactly does that work? There's a common misconception when it comes to realism, and that is, to make something look as real as possible. You have to be as accurate as possible. And you also have to capture as much detail as you can. The more accurate and the more detailed, the better. But the element of realism that's most important in making something look real, three-dimensionality, has actually little to do with those things. And it's easy to see why. What happens if we take all the detail and information away from the donut? Well, if we do that, we're left with what's called a torus. And while the detail on the surface is minimal compared to that of a donut, and there's not much in terms of information, there is no reason why it can't look realistic. You can paint a torus just as realistic as a donut. So what about accuracy then? Well, you can have a torus that's quote-unquote inaccurate with a shape that's slightly off, but that's still no reason why it can't look like it's suspended in three-dimensional space. So if it's not accuracy or detail or color or shape or form, what is it then? What is it that makes things look real? The answer to that is it's the same two things that make everything in real life look real. Light and shadow. In particular, the interplay between the two. Because while light reveals an object, it's the shadow that gives context and places it into three-dimensional space. The key to three-dimensionality, realism or whatever you want to call it, is to not focus on what makes a donut look different from a torus, but to focus on what makes a torus look like it's suspended in three-dimensional space. Because while the first makes it look like a donut, 
It's the second that ultimately creates the illusion of realism. So after establishing a base and painting the background, it's time to refine things and to add some detail. This part isn't exactly a step-by-step -step process and since I've been painting for many years, I automatically make adjustments to several things at the same time. But fundamentally, the name of the game is more or less divide and conquer. I divide large areas into smaller ones and I do the same thing that I did at the very beginning of the painting. I focus on how light and shadow affect each individual shape. And if you're now thinking, isn't there something missing here? Well, you're absolutely right, because what is a glazed donut without sprinkles? But before we put that last piece of the puzzle into place, I'd like to take a minute to thank today's sponsor Skillshare. As you guys all probably know by now, Skillshare is a great online learning community for people like you and me to get creative and learn new skills. You get to explore thousands of classes with topics ranging from mastering illustration to the basics of cinematography, which is super important for painters, by the way. You can learn about drawing, writing, taking photos, making videos, all kinds of different things. And one of the greatest things, I think, is that you can find some short and sweet primers on fundamental skills that every creative person should have. For example, the Graphic Design Basics Core Principles for Visual Design course, where you can get a short introduction into some of the most important fundamentals of design. And at just $10 a month for an unlimited premium membership, Skillshare doesn't break the bank. But since they are sponsoring this video, the first 1000 who click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So I highly encourage you guys to make use of that opportunity. So let's round this thing off and add some sprinkles to achieve maximum glazed goodness. Of course I haven't forgotten about the sprinkles. To the contrary, everything I've been doing up until now has been leading up to this moment. I've been painting all the underlying structure with the fact in mind that I'll be adding sprinkles on top of everything in the end. Leaving this to the very end not only allowed me to freely paint the glaze on top of the donut without having to paint around each individual sprinkle, but now I can also paint the sprinkles on top and make sure that the colors are nice and vibrant, like sprinkles are supposed to be. Painting these follow the same pattern as painting the donut itself. I paint large shapes of color and I give them depth and context by adding light and shadow. Once you understand how light and shadow create the illusion of form, how color can be used to communicate moods, how human perception can be manipulated, well, that's when things really start to get fun. Because then you can begin to break and bend those rules and use your knowledge and skill to not just paint what you see, but to manipulate it and to create various effects. The truth is, what I'm painting here might look realistic or tangible or three-dimensional, but it doesn't look like the real donut in front of me at all. Nor does it look like the photo that aids me in painting this. What I'm painting here is an amalgamation of what I see, what I know, and what I personally prefer. And all that to create a very specific visual experience. What I'm painting here is only inspired by reality and not a copy of it. Not unlike what a movie is to real life. A phrase that gets thrown around a lot is paint what you see and not what you think you see. But the thing is Painting what you see also only gets you what you see. And as it turns out, real life doesn't look all that impressive or interesting. The great thing about art and painting in particular is that by applying your knowledge and skills and your own preferences to amplify or highlight certain aspects of what you are painting, you can create your own interpretation of reality. One that is not only more charming and interesting, but in some ways, even more real than real life itself. Friends, 
Thanks so much for watching. If you feel like having a donut now, you can either go out and get yourself some, or you can go to my website where this painting is available right now. And if you like the video and you want to support the channel, you can do that too, by becoming a patron. By becoming a patron you not only help me keep creating these videos, but you also get access to a bunch of cool rewards, like joining the exclusive Artminds Discord server or a look behind the scenes at what I'm creating when I'm not making videos for YouTube. And with that being said guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. Special thanks to all patrons of the channel for being so amazing and making these videos possible and thank you all out there for watching guys. Please hit like, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and yeah, have a good one.